In this lecture, we will study about the testing for serializability. When designing concurrency control schemes, we must show that schedules generated by the scheme are serializable. Okay, so let's suppose we have a schedule uh, S1 and we have a set of transactions. Let's suppose T1, T2, T3, and we have some set of instructions are there. Let's suppose one, two, the other instruction I'm just numbering it three, four, five, <coughs> and then six, seven. Okay, so when uh, when you design a concurrency control scheme so where more than one uh, transactions are executing concurrently, then we have to show that whether this schedule is serializable or not. So this schedule S1 is said to be serializable if it is conflict equivalent to a serial schedule. So let's suppose um, S10 is a serial schedule consisting of these three transactions. Okay. So the serial schedule of S1 can be written like this: one, two. Then you have to five will come. Then after we have three, four. Then we have Six and seven. Okay, so if H1 is conflict equivalent to S10, which is a serial schedule, then we will say that H1 is serializable. So you have to check so whether a schedule is serializable or not. To do that, we must first understand how to determine, given a particular schedule S, whether the schedule is serializable or not. Okay, so first of all, whenever a schedule is given. You have to check whether this schedule is serializable or not. So, is there any algorithm for this or not? Okay. Okay. So, generally, it is not given. From only this schedule, you have to determine whether this is serializable or not. Because uh, there are many possible serial schedule. This is one serial schedule that I have uh, I have drawn here. That is uh, serial schedule is T1, T2, T3. Okay. So, another serial schedule possible is T2, T1, T3. So you have to check it whether this S1 is um, conflict equivalent to this serial schedule or this serial schedule. Okay, so it may take a long time. So we have a better algorithm for this to check whether a schedule is serializable or not. So we can do so by using a precedence graph. Okay, <clears throat> so consider a schedule S. We construct a directed graph. So precedence graph is a directed graph. And which is called a precedence graph from schedule S. This graph consists of a pair of uh, vertices V, set of vertices V and set of edges E. Okay, the set of vertices consists of all the transactions participating in the schedule. So let's suppose in a schedule there are three transactions. So we can have like this. So the other set of vertices because there are three transactions in a schedule. If there are n number of transactions in a schedule, then there will be n number of vertices like this. Okay. This set of edges consists of all edges T i to T j for which one of the three conditions hold. So for the edge, okay, so uh, in between which vertices the edge is present. So for that we have three conditions. And if at least one of the three conditions is hold, then we have an edge between T i and T j and the direction is from T i to T j. Okay. So what are the conditions? So conditions are, so we have T i T j. Okay. The first condition is, so we are checking for an edge from T i to T j. Okay. T i execute right Q before T j. So we have this kind of situation, right Q, then right Q. If this kind of situation occurs, then there will be an edge between T i A to T j and the direction is from T i A to T j. This is the first condition. Second condition is, okay, so second condition, T i executes read Q, okay, before T j executes right Q. Okay, so if this kind of condition occur, then the there will be an edge between T i A to T j and the direction is from T i A to T j. Third condition is 
ti execute write queue before tj execute write queue so we have this kind of situation write queue right. okay so if any one of these three conditions hold then there will be an edge between ti and tj and the direction is from ti to tj so this is, this is the first condition this is the second condition and this is the third condition okay so come to an example here uh, okay so if an edge uh, so if an edge ti to tj exist in the precedence graph then in any serial schedule s dash equivalent to s ti must appear before tj okay so let's suppose ti tj this edge exists in the precedence graph then in any serial schedule s dash equivalent to s so let's, let's suppose s is a schedule and s dash is a serial schedule equivalent to s then ti must appear before tj so in the serial schedule s dash ti must appear before tj okay so you can write like this ti must appear before tj it means all the operation of ti will be before the operation of tj that is the meaning of this point okay so come to an example here the precedence graph of schedule 1 so this is the precedence graph of schedule 1 so there are two transactions t1 and t2 so there are two vertices t1 and t2 and see here there is a read a and there is a there is a read a and there is a write a so read q write q so second condition is correct for this data item a as well as the, see here there is a write a okay so let me first check the uh, the most uh, recent uh, instructions so there is a write a then there is a read a okay so this the condition is first condition okay so write a read a okay so there is an edge between t1 to t2 as well as we can see here write b read b there is another okay so here we have um, for this one data item a we have this edge and for this data item b we can have another edge like this but since it is a graph we have to show only one edge so this this edge is shown here okay so it's very uh, very much clear here let's come to the another example the precedence graph of schedule 2 is this so here t2 the direction is from t2 to t1 so how it is see here so this is a write a and there is a read a write a read a okay as well as see here write b read b write b read b okay so this conditions satisfied so there is that is why there is an edge between t2 to t1 so this is the precedence graph for schedule 2 come to the third example okay so see here read a to write a read a to write a so there is a edge t1 to t2 this edge okay now see here there is a read b okay and write b okay so this graph t2 to t1 okay as well as you can say t1 to t2 this edge can also be obtained from this right b right b okay and this edge t2 to t1 can also be obtained from uh, from this right a and right a. okay so this is the precedence graph for the schedule 4 if the precedence graph for S has a cycle, then schedule S is not conflict serializable. Okay, so see here, if the graph con contains no cycles, then the schedule S is conflict serializable. So in this example, precedence graph for schedule 1 and 2 are 
do not contain cycle so there is no cycle here as well as in the schedule 1 there is no cycle here in the precedence graph for schedule 1 there is no cycle indicating that these schedules are conflict serializable so schedule 1 and schedule 2 are conflict serializable because there are no cycle in the precedence graph for schedule 1 and schedule 2 the precedence graph for schedule 4 on the other hand contains a cycle so there is a cycle see here there is a cycle from here here from here to t1 to t2 and t2 to t1 so there is a cycle in the precedence graph for schedule 4 indicating that this schedule is not conflict serializable so this schedule 4 is not conflict serializable why because there is a cycle in the precedence graph for schedule 4 a serializability order of the transition can be obtained through a topological sorting okay so this is a topological sorting so this is the uh, this is a homework for you you can search it in the data structure what is a topological sorting okay so this much for today thank you